trust me, we were too far from reality. Welcome to the North, North, North. Hello everyone, welcome to the Nosh podcast. So this podcast is sponsored by Beanboard, located in China, Walter. If you want to have the best coffee, milkshake, this is the perfect place to have it. So I will start to introduce our podcast. Nosh podcast, the Nosh, the word Nosh means uh, we. It's a plural in Portuguese. That's why uh, we, we name it as Nosh Podcast because we were based on the say, African saying, Ubuntu, together, together, <laughs> yeah, together we are, Ubuntu, yeah, that's why we name it Nosh. So why, what is the reason behind it? Why we create the pod, this podcast? Uh, I will start introducing myself. My name is Jerry Bengi. I am Angolan. Uh, I'm studying actually in India, Andhra Pradesh, Vishakapatna, AU, <laughs> School of International Business. So since we came here on 2021, we have been facing many issues. And before we reach this place, we have a different idea about India. Uh, we, we saw India on movies, on TV shows, and many other places. But since we came here, uh, we face a different reality. And we start expressing ourselves as a group. And then we figure out that during our conversation, uh, we find many, many crucial points that we believe that if we share to other peoples, uh, it will prepare themselves before they reach this place. So that's why we create this podcast. So to start our program, uh, I will invite our guest to start introducing themselves. I will start by the ladies. I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> give the opportunity for the ladies <laughs> first. You can introduce yourself. Okay, hi, I am Nombuso Lolofagutse. I am from the kingdom of Eswatini, previously known as Swaziland. Uh, I'm doing my final year, BTEC Biotechnology, and I've been here for quite some time. I came here in 2019, yeah. so yeah, I've been living in India. <laughs> That's great. And then now, my hi brother. everyone. My name is Sama Jobe. I'm from South Africa. I'm currently surviving in India. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a year. I only arrived here last year. I'm doing BBA. Uh, it's, uh, I'm doing my second year now. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome for you two guys. Uh, uh, don't don't take us bad. Uh, I believe that in the other side you will be asking why you only guys put African student there. There are more students here, they are Nepal, they are from Afghanistan. Yeah, we believe that in the next episode we will have everyone here. Because this podcast is specifically for foreigners in the foreign land. So let's start our conversation because I'm really excited to hear from you guys, because I believe that you guys have a, a, a different point of view about this place. So <laughs> the ladies first, of course, because they, everyone wins. Yeah, they every time wins. So I will start to ask you, Lolo, uh, how is it India? What, what was your view before you came here and after you reached this place? Okay, before coming here, I had um, two students from my country. Yeah. So they told me that uh, it's going to be populated, it's going to be loud. But you know, I live in a very small country. Our population is around one million. Yeah. So I didn't think it would be this much. So when I got here, it was, I was hit by re reality. It was very loud. It was very populated and it, it was very hot. So um, I would say that my expectations were disappointed <laughs> they were very disappointed because it was way too hot than i could too imagine hot. yes too okay. hot i thought i wouldn't survive uh, <laughs> i remember we used to walk to to the dean's office for registration yeah and every day i would tell my mom back home i want to come home i can't take this <laughs> this is too much so yeah um 
when I when I was leaving home, I thought it was gonna be just like any other country. It was gonna yeah. be populated a bit. You know, I've been to other countries, South Africa, Zimbabwe. You know, I face different environment. It's a bit populated than my country. It's a bit busy, but uh, like not like my country. <clears throat> but when I got to India. Yeah, now I know what busy is. <laughs> <laughs> and what about yourself? Uh, I don't want to lie, my yeah. expectations were very high. Mm -hmm. And when I came to India, because you know what happens? Yeah. Once you get the message that you, you are going to India, you go online, you go to YouTube, you search the place you are going to. Perfect. And the pictures and the videos there can mislead you. <laughs> so I was like, wow, I'm going to this place. This place is beautiful, eh? When yeah. I get here, uh uh. The reality is not what I saw online. Oh my so God. my expectations were very high when I get here, they mm -hmm. had to drop. Yeah, but um, I can add on what Lolo said, exactly the weather, the weather was too much for, I think for most of us from Africa, the yeah. weather is too much. Yeah. Even now they're saying it's winter, but this is not the winter we want. We want the <laughs> real winter because it, 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 it yeah. has been hot. For, the, for yeah. the most of the months we've been here, it has been hot. Hot. Yeah. Um, my experience, uh, I would say, I'm surviving, as I said, the time I was introducing myself. It, it, it's the year of surviving, because I'm still getting to know India, getting to understand how to live and everything. Yeah. You know, the funny fact, uh, as Lolo says, that in the beginnings, uh, she was calling her mother every time, that, saying that, I want to go back. The first time that we reached India, I was totally scared. Why? Uh, we reached to, um, we went straight to, to New Delhi. We, w we were in Dubai and then we moved to New Delhi. And when I reached New Delhi, man, I just saw big guns, man. I never saw that in my life. You know, uh, African, we have uh, many countries facing wars and all those things. And most of that weapons, we used to see it on movie or on a TV show. Yeah, but... When we reached to the airport, I saw many soldiers and big guns, and I was like, man, come on, what's happened here, man? Yeah, and when we moved to, to Vizak, yeah, I, I was expecting something like, like in the movie, man. You know, the Indian movie is like, everything is dancing, man. The, the actor going outside, dancing. Yeah. <laughs> They go to buy something, they are dancing, man. And I was expecting the same thing at, at the airport. Maybe he and Vizak, someone from uh, under, under university, go there and pick up us by dancing and all those things, but nothing, nothing at all. And we reached the South, South Hostel. To say the truth, that I, I, I was scared, man. Yeah, everyone, when he reached here for the first time, the first thought is like, I want to go back home. Yeah. And my experience was different than yours because we were the first bench of Angolans here. There were no Angolans here in Vizak. We were 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> community. Yeah, we, we built out the uh, community. It is like uh, the, there was one guy from Nigeria, Ayo. Yeah. One guy from Uganda, Gerard, and two guys from Mozambique. At least we have someone who speaks Portuguese. Yeah. yeah, we were able to communicate, and they receive us, they guide us, and help us on everything. But I will move to the next question. How was to deal with the population, uh, with the society here? Because when we reach here in the morning, many guys pass through me, and no one says good morning. They just reached me straightly. Which country? And I was like, yeah, Angola. And what are you doing here? How, how much your, your father earned per month? And I was like, come on, bro. Cool down. Because this is personal information. But during the time, I could understand that this is part of the culture. They are not like us. If you wake up and you don't say good morning, your mom will kill you. Yeah, man, like hell. So, how was your your experience? Let me start with some. Exactly what you are saying. The yeah. spirit of Ubuntu is what I mean. The humanity. The humanity. Because yeah. as African countries, as you are saying, mm -hmm. when you, you are coming across a stranger, wherever you are, mm -hmm. the first thing to to say before you crack a conversation is to yeah. greet that person. To greet that but person. But in India, that's not their culture. 
yeah. like they just get into the conversation and ask whatever that they want to ask and i'm like can't yeah. you just greet first yeah. even when i'm when i'm approaching a two point i'm paying i'm having my my bread going to the lady will Definitely. be like 65 rupees come on please can't you just <laughs> greet me first because that's what we do in our country we mm-hmm. greet the lady who's in a two point before you pay yeah so that that exactly my point as you are saying uh, what how was the food the dress and the dress the dress style the food um well according to the food i told like i told myself that i'm not yeah. gonna be adapting to to indian food except for brian because that's what we know yeah like in most of us noodles we have noodles in our countries but other than that no mm. i don't yeah. wanna I, don't. <laughs> I like i don't wanna get myself to adapt into those things what about the dress style because back home you mm-hmm. cannot find someone in the office with flip-flops True. Yeah, or without suit. Well, but here they are more open. It's normal. No, lecturer, a lecturer to come to class wearing flip flops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that, that was a shock for me. I remember the first time my lecturer came in in class and I was like, what's happening? Is this a lecturer? <laughs> no, no, it can't be. And then, yeah. and then, and then he started uh, teaching. The whole time I was like, are you for real? <laughs> Are you for real? Yeah. <laughs> and his shirt was like un untucking, so I was like, no, this can't be him. Mm-mm. But then I realized that uh, going to the bank, going everywhere, I realized that mm-hmm. it's their style, it's how they dress. So yeah. it took a lot to adapt to that. And that was for you the way that people stop you on the street, get to know you. It was scary. Scary. Very scary. When I got here, um, Africans were limited. Yep. You guys, your batch was the one that uh, I want to say broke boundaries and uh, um, stereotypes maybe about wow. Africa because mm-hmm. when we were here, it was just you know when you see an African on the street, you already know that African. Unlike now, there are a lot of African, so yeah. it's better. So when I got here, they used to touch my hair. Like you'd be in an auto you. sitting, and then you feel people are already touching your hair without permission. <laughs> oh that was God. the worst because it was without permission. And yeah. they used to stir. They used to take videos. Like when you're walking on the beach, mm. you see people taking videos of you. And that was very scary because sometimes it would be men, and you don't know like what's happening. Why are you taking videos of me? I'm just walking. So it was very scary. But I got used to it, like I adapted to it. So, yeah. and the more there are Africans in India, the more mm. the Indians are adapting to us. Because right now, it has been a while since someone touched my hair. Instead, yep. they ask, "Can I touch your hair?" I think wow. we tell them. That mm. I, I've, I've noticed that other girls they they tell them like, "No, don't touch my hair. Ask before you touch my hair." Yeah. So we had to set those boundaries. Like, no, you can't just touch my hair. You have to ask for permission. That's so now. As we are progressing into it, as the years are going by, they are being more lenient. They are being more understanding that we don't know their style of life. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. But, you know, uh, the interesting thing is that the first hi, good morning, and the first greeting from an Indian guy I received in the church. The first time that we came here, we came here on one Sunday, uh, S- Saturday, and on, on Sunday when we went to the church, the person who was in the at door, yeah, he say, hi, good morning, how are you? And I was like, wow, at least someone. <laughs> yeah, and it was interesting. And one funny fact, it was like, we went to, I cannot mention the name here, but we went to a mall, and I was on, on the line, waiting for my time, and I saw a kid looking at me like, this guy is real? And he approached and he touched me. And her mother came and pushed him so fast. And I said, no, 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 no. Let him touch him. He touched me, he touched my hair. And he was very, very happy. And they start speaking in Telugu. Unfortunately, on that time, even Bavunara, I, I couldn't understand what is it. Yeah, but as you say, uh, we need to put this boundary and also teach those who are near to us. As now, I have many Indian friends, and we have been sharing many information. I believe that now they have a different idea about Africa. And the big question that I want to make you guys, and I believe that you can explain it well, because those who will watch or are watching us on this time, 
they will understand, is Africa a country or a continent? Because many people, when they stop you, hey, Baya, you are from Africa, Africa. And I say, yeah, I say, I am from Angola. Oh, Angola, South Africa. No, Angola. Yes, yes, South Africa. So they give us a country. They don't accept us a country. I also observe that as Africans, we know more about other peoples that they know about us. So I believe that you can give a better explanation about it. Is African a country or a continent? Okay, a, a country is South Africa, right? Yeah. Then Africa is a continent. Yes. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think whenever they, they confuse countries like if you are, if, like if you are black, they only know that you're from South Africa because I think South Africa has history. It, and like in the entire world, so that's why they confuse countries with with South Africa only. Yeah. Also, they watch a lot of South African cricket. Cricket, that's, yeah. For that's the game. why that's why they know South Africa a lot. Because yeah, so that is the most popular sport in mm, India. Well. Yeah. So yeah, Africa is a continent, it's not a, a continent. country. <laughs> a country. Yeah. Now let's observe one thing. We talk about the dress, the the style. Uh, let's also analyze that they are more flexible than us because back home they create a standard for us to go to the school or to the college and as we know there are many people there that don't have enough condition even to buy a perfect dress to go to the college but if we observe here they are more flexible on this aspect even to go and uh, renew your ID or your passport they are more flexible than back home. Don't you agree with me on this? How is it in King of Eswatini? <laughs> I feel like uh, because we were colonized by the Britain, British people, yeah. we, are, we are living in their standards. Like mm -hmm. if you have to go to work, have to wear a suit, which is Western. Mm -hmm. It's not African. That's one thing I, I like about Indians. They are not doing their Western thing. They are yeah. doing their own thing. They're they following thing. their own culture. Yeah. Although it makes them a bit close-minded, mm -hmm. but it's also a good thing because yeah. they still wear their saris. In Africa, we no longer wear our traditional way when we're going outside. Like if you're wearing it, it's like, oh, is there an event? No, it doesn't yeah. have to, it doesn't, you don't have to attend an event to wear your traditional way. Yeah. So I, I really respect Indians for that, sticking mm -hmm. to their saris and their traditional way and being flexible. Like. They, they are not strict, like yeah. if you're going somewhere, you have to dress like this, that, like this, this, like this, yeah. like, you Your know. Your hairstyle <laughs> must, must be on this level, yeah. that, or that level. Yeah, for Indians, yeah. they just uh, do their, their ponytail, yeah. wear their saris and it's done. <laughs> and how do you think yeah, about no, it? Yeah, no, I, I think I, I give them a round of applause for that. Yeah. yeah. There's no depression. There's no depression. You can't be depressed. Like, what am I going to wear today at the college? Mm -hmm. You only we only give depression or we get depressed for each other as Africans because I yeah. know the standard of wearing, the standard of how should I look mm -hmm. like in in front of the people. Mm -hmm. So as for India, they don't care what do you wear. They don't care how do you appear in front of them. They just wear what they they think they should wear. So yeah, yeah I think I for the for that for that yeah I give them ten yeah. yeah. One thing also that really inspired me here in India is that they take their own thing as priority. One funny fact, uh, before I reached India and I was studying and my father asked me, you are going to India, right? So you know what is the, speak, the language that is more, is more spoken in India? Or what is the first language in India? Uh, I say, Father, is it English? He say, no, go and search. You didn't start geography. The first language in India is Hindi. And I was really surprised. And another thing is that if you go to the cinema, most of the movies that are played there, there are Indian movies. If you go uh, on YouTube, you will see many young guys inspired to be or to be part of the army because they work on it. If you uh, check, even in our college, how our teachers, male, uh, female teachers, they dress, all of them, they dress sari. 
They only dress a uh, worse than clothes for a special occasion or if they are going out to a pub or club. And also another very, very deep and interesting thing. They are really religious. They are more deeper than us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ as my savior. But uh, I believe that as African, we don't give too many value to our own beliefs our own traditions, culture, and customs. Don't you agree with me that in this point, they inspire us? I feel like uh, as Africans, we mm. have made our own culture and custom seem like they are devilish, you know? <laughs> yeah, For us, true. we have ancestors. Mm -hmm. We believe in ancestors where you have to you slaughter God, you know, to thank the ancestors. But we don't do that anymore because if you do it, no, it's a devil thing. It's a devil's work, you know. Yeah. So I feel like that that thing about India is a very good thing because um, they still follow their customs. They still mm -hmm. follow their culture. It's yeah. it's beautiful to watch. Like even if uh, even if they are Christian, even if they are Hindi, mm -hmm. Muslim, but mm -hmm. their customs they still follow them and value them a lot, and that's a nice thing. Because for us, yeah. now if you want to do a traditional wedding in my country, it's like, ah, why are you doing a traditional wedding? You should do a white Sex wedding. <laughs> yes, in your body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for us, uh, yeah. we we for us we have umshanga dance whereby mm -hmm. young girls. They attend it and they are wearing like things that are showing their bodies. And now, yeah. and now our we are too modern for that. We think, ah, you're showing your body, but it's it's my culture, it's my custom. I yeah. should be doing that. Definitely. So yeah. 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 Well, yeah I think some... I think I think we as Africans, mm -hmm. we believe that there's time for for something. Mm -hmm. So Indians are like are fully religious. Yeah. Fully, fully, fully religious. Mm -hmm. And we as African, we have time for that. We, we only go to church on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if we have a, a church uniform or church outfit, you're going to see us in that on Sunday. We don't have to wait day in, day out. So that's why we seem like we are different from Indians. Indians are more religious than us. Than us. Yeah, yeah. It, it's because they always in, in Saris, they, they like they always praying in each and every day, in each and every time of the day. So yeah, I think that's why we look like we are different and we don't um, into religious things that much as African. Okay. And another interesting uh, subject that I want you guys to talk about it is uh, I, I went deep on searching why they uh, stereotype people. Like, it's very common to hear them asking you if you are a Nigerian or if you are a South African. So I could find out that they call you a South African because of the cricket. Most of them, they, no, all of them, they love cricket. So it's very easy. You will find many African players here but most of them are from South Africa. They are also from Uganda and Kenya, but most of them are from South Africa. But there is a, also a good and bad side about the Nigerians. So I could uh, realize that in the past, the, there are some students that came here in India and built this bad reputation. They were involved in many types of crimes and scandals. Yeah, and people start a stereotype them. Like, if you are from Nigeria, yeah, you are a bad guy. So if you say you are from another place, yeah, it's good. But I, I want you guys to, 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 to briefly talking about this because we have met many guys from Nigeria here that you will never find them drinking or smoking or involved in any type of crime. I met one guy who received us uh, Solomon, Solomon, that guy is, is amazing, man. He's a, an inspiring man. So, and I never heard something bad about him. Yeah, as long as I know. And he was a well, well, welcome guy. So, but unfortunately, it's happened even with me. Like when I went to find a place to stay, uh, I heard a bad comment from one guy. He said that, no, I cannot rent you my place. You guys, Nigerians and Africans are all the same because you are involved in prostitution and drugs and all those things. 
I don't want you to do this kind of things in my house. So back home, as we know, we have Indians also. And back home, we have Indian in different type of business. Especially in my country, they are in telecommunication, in manufacturing, and also in uh, cars. But you will never see us tapping an Indian guy in the road and ask him, man, man I need a, a, a new audio. Yeah, yeah give me a BMW <laughs> or something like that, you know? So, but unfortunately, this is the bad reputation that some guys built in the past. So, what is the information that we can share for other people that are looking at us on this time and not watching this podcast? Let me start with you, Sam. Um, specifically about Nigerians. Yeah. Nigerians and mm -hmm. Africa in general. Because as once they look at black guy, man, mm -hmm. yeah, you are all the same. Yeah, but I'd like to, to be different on that yeah. one because it, like, as we are saying, they are specifically saying Nigerian yeah, people are like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not true because I also know someone from Nigeria, Vincent. He's yeah. also here. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a cool guy. Yeah. But what cool. are they saying? I relate because mm -hmm. I know people from Nigeria has has done a lot of things even in in my country. country. And I have someone in UK right now. He's also saying like a very bad thing, mm -hmm. very bad thing that has been done by people from Nigeria. Yeah. So it's a stereotype that should be that should be broken by people from Nigeria. They all need yeah. to they, do this. they also they they as Nigerian people should do something to prove them right. You see, they are not like yeah. that. So yeah, I think it's Nigerian people who are here or who are still going in in, in, in and around the world. Okay. Do the right thing in front of people, in front of whatever they are so that they can Okay. Yeah. What about you, Lul? <laughs> okay. With this, <clears throat> I'm gonna say this. Every country uh -huh. has the good side and the bad side. That's Unfortunately right. for Nigeria, the ones that leave the country are the ones that do bad things. So I feel like it's it's wrong for people to assume that every Nigerian is wrong. Yeah. Those people are good people. I've met amazing Nigerians. So I feel like we should be more open-minded. We should be more open-minded because every country, even Indians in my country, some are very bad to the point that if I would look at another Indian, I would just feel disgusted, you know. But that's not the issue, that's not the thing. Not all Indians are like that. So I feel like we should give Nigeria benefits of a doubt. We should give, Indians should give Africans benefits of a doubt. Yeah, because definitely. I think in the past or in those big cities, the most of the black women have been uh, prostitutes. Mm -hmm. So when I'm, when I'm walking on the streets, when I'm driving, when I'm doing something, sometimes Indians be like, hey, how are you doing? Can I spend the night with you? It's very scary. It's traumatizing because what do you mean you want to spend the night with me? Like sometimes when, you, when you're walking at the mall and then they start looking at you with those eyes. and. For me, I go, what's wrong? Why are you looking at me? Like, can I, can I spend the night with you? Like, it's very scary. And then when you say no, like, you guys, you do this, we know you do this, it's scary. So it's not only in Nigeria, it's, it's an, a problem African face, African people face, not just in India, unfortunately, all yeah. over the world. All over the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that people from Nigeria, because mm -hmm. um, Indians yeah. have been specifically saying Nigerian people Nigerian have done people. this. Yeah. Like, if you're saying you're from Angola, they know nothing about Angola. They say, oh, yeah. if you're saying from Swadin, they know nothing bad about Swadin. If you say yeah. from Nigeria, like, ah, Nigerian people, then yeah. they start having stories. They start. That's why I'm saying people from Nigeria should uh, start and, and do, I don't know how, because they are doing good. But that, that's just the thing. Right now, the Nigerians I know that are in Vizek, that were in Vizek, they've done nothing wrong, but already they have that reputation. Yeah. You see? That's the thing. Is there... I think we should be more open-minded. We open should... Minded. As Africans, we are open-minded. Mm -hmm. We understand that, as you are saying, it's not all Nigerian people. Mm -hmm. But as for Indians, wanting from Nigeria, so... I, I think, think Indians should be more open-minded. Exactly. Yeah. They are very Yeah, in many aspects, because uh, once you are a black, yeah, it's a, a, 
disadvantage here in, in India? Once you're a black person in India, yeah. it's, life becomes hard. Hard. Just because you're black, without any problems, like the fact that you're black standing here, already your life is hard. Yeah. There are there are good people, of course. There are many people that help us. Yeah, many Indian guys that I have been dealing with directly. And there are exceptional people. They are outstanding. But unfortunately, we have also been facing many kind of problems. Like, for example, I respect that all of Indians are very nationalist. You know, they defend them, them brothers and their sisters. As we also... Uh, as Africans and Angolans, we also defend defend what is our. But when you are not being fair, is it a problem? One thing that we face, most of the international students here in Vizac, they face, is when it involves an accident. True. Yeah. Uh, in my community, for example, uh, one guy made an accident. Once he, he touched the car, so he was trying to put the bike in the, in the side to start talking to the guy. They catch him like a robber. And they say like, no, no, I'm not a gangster. Uh, I'm not a thief. Man, I'm just putting my bike here and then we'll start talking to see how we can solve this problem. No, 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 we, go, we need to go to the, to, the, to the showroom, showroom. Okay, let's move there. And then we, when we move there, you you will see that even in the showroom, the price was changing only because you are a black person. Yes, exactly. And what I'm saying, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about yeah. that. The mm -hmm. only thing we have to do is to be careful all the time whenever Definitely. you're driving on the roads. There's nothing Definitely. you can do about that because yeah. even the house I'm, I'm staying in, I'm renting 8,000. Yeah. But there are Indians who's re who are renting 3,000. Because I'm black, I had yeah. to get... A, a higher, a higher amount to pay. Once you get in a problem with an Indian, it's done. It's done. Yeah. Uh, sadly, you can't defend yourself. Yeah. The more you try to explain, it's like you're fighting them, and they get all hyped and up. And they don't even understand you mm -hmm. well because mm -hmm. English is a communication barrier between. Definitely. Us. They like they can't understand a proper English. So once you are trying to um, to explain. You are fighting with them. I do understand that they are trying to protect their own, but it goes back to the fact that they are close minded because yeah. they should also listen to us. Listen we are not us. fighting them. We are in their country for crying out loud. So we are trying to adapt to their rules. We are trying to do everything by their rules. So the least they can do is just understand us. I think that is the only chance they get to fight with us. <laughs> yeah. That is you the mean only they, they get want to, to fight, fight with us. every day? Yes. They want to fight with us. Exactly. <laughs> but one interesting thing is that among all the those issues, there are always I don't know if it's the mercy or the grace of God. I've met also many good police that I, I had a problem recently. Uh, I was in the backside of Otto, and we were only two in the bike. So he was the one who made an accident. So once he punched and go out of the bike, and then they start discussing Telugu, and then I saw that the problem became mine. And I was like, oh, calm down, calm down, calm down. <laughs> What's happened? What I have done? No, it's your fault. No, you need to pay. What I have done if I'm your client? I'm not the one who is driving. So once the police came, and thanks God, that guy, you are a blessing. If you are listening to this, yeah, you are a blessing. That guy speaks English also. When I explained to him, he said that, he said in Telugu to those guys, if you don't want to take me to take you to the police station now, when you will not drive anymore in your life, take your bike and go. Why are you are accusing him? For what? He was not driving. You see how uh, how dangerous it will be the situation if the police will not be a, a spoken guy or an English guy who know how to speak English. I feel like um, I don't know if I'm being biased. I'm sorry mm -hmm. if I'm being biased, but I, what I've noticed is that the Indians that are more educated and the Indians that know English, they are more kind than the typical ones who don't understand English. Yeah. They are more understanding. So if 
if I'm in a quarrel with an Indian and he understands English, he will try to understand what happened. But if I'm in a quarrel with an Indian who doesn't understand English, he next thing I know, he's gonna call people, and then hey. next thing I know, I'm in a, I'm in big trouble. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, I didn't do anything wrong. And when the the time I say I didn't do anything wrong, it's like I'm fighting. More people are coming. coming in. Everyone there. is yelling. You will like, see yourself in the middle. <laughs> yeah, everyone is yelling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a time when this thing happened and everyone was yelling. Like I was I was buying vegetables. Yep. And then this I, I told them that I don't have they didn't have change, five hundred rupees change. So I gave I, I said, Okay, let me go to the ATM and withdraw two hundred and then I'll come back. So when I left, I left with the veggie. And when I was going, like I'm coming back, they were grabbing me. Hey, you have to pay, you have to pay. I'm like, no, no, no. Okay, let me leave the veggies. I'm just coming. The ATM was literally opposite. They could see me going there and coming mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And I started yelling. I said, okay, let me go with one person. And I, I tried dragging one person. Oh my God. It was a mess. Then one, one guy came in and asked me what happened. And I told him and he was like, okay. He explained to them, oh, they almost bite his head off. But he, he, he did explain and then he did tell me that he ended up paying for those veggies. And saying no, they they won't understand you. Right now, they think you're trying to steal from them. There is nothing. Else. Exactly what I said earlier on. Mm -hmm. They are frustrated. They are angry. They yeah. have anger issues. The only chance they get to fight with us is when they think we are at fault. You you, you said something uh, interesting. Anger issues. Mm -hmm. What's your take on Indians and anger? <clears throat> I feel like. Because they are controlled all their lives, they have this anger within them, you know, because you can't talk back, you can't express, you can't even choose your own cause. So they have this anger inside of them. That's why they just burst anyway. But as I study about the Hindu, Hinduism as a religion, it's a peaceful religion. And yeah, it spreads a lot of um, karma, a lot of uh, interior peace, a lot of uh, mercy, forgiveness, and all those things. I believe that also, not only in India, but all around the world, uh, the people are sick in a certain point because life became more harder than before. After COVID, everything, yeah. After COVID, everything became very difficult and people are very stressed and frustrated. Yeah, depressed. So when they find the, when they find the opportunity to express themselves, man, yeah, you will be the one. So among all of this that we have been talking, my question is that, is Indian culture adaptable for foreigners, for those who want to come here to live or to study or to work or even to open a business not to open a business mm -hmm. if you're from africa you can come and open a business here in india mm -hmm. um i don't know about you i don't know about you yeah. but about us i think i know because our currency are more powerful than indian currency yeah so obviously you can't come and work here in india okay. like it won't work for, for you oh, yeah great. Okay, I believe that um, is Indian culture adaptable for living? Yeah. I think living in India, you can adapt living in India because they will not force you to follow their culture. Yeah. Sure. They will yeah. never force you to follow their culture. So you can, they, it, it's not that it's adaptable. You'll just live your own life. They will yeah. just let you live your own life. They they won't try to force you like you should eat this you should, you should do this you know in africa when someone is living there we're always like you should do this you should do. no indians they just let you be in fact yeah. they they don't even mind your own business like you'll be living alone but one thing's for sure you will be lonely because they they will not care about you yeah <laughs> sometimes they eat, they act like you don't exist if you find the ones that are not like into your business mm -hmm. they'll act like you don't exist and you'll be lonely trust me i'm the only african in my in my class Mm -hmm. And they are minding their own business. They are using their own language. Sometimes they give us assi assignments I don't understand. Because they are, they are minding their own business. I'm yeah. like, 
I'm like living in my own world. Do you, <laughs> have, uh, do you have like friends from your, your, yeah, from your class? Yeah, I do have a friend. No, like it's been years, so now they're adapting to me. Oh, okay. They start using English. But first year was the hardest, and then we went to uh, COVID uh, uh, quarantine. Yeah, quarantine. Whereby there was lockdown, no one was allowed out. So when we were discussing in the group that we have to submit assignment, we didn't submit anything because they were using their own language. It was tough. So, coming to live in India. Uh -huh. Come to live in India. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come to live in India. Because yeah. we are too comfortable in our countries. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's nice. It's luxury. But when you come to live in India, you face reality. You see poverty firsthand. Like, I've seen people who are struggling firsthand. In my country, you, I know there are people struggling. Mm -hmm. I know there are people struggling, yeah. but I've never like seen them struggling. In India, I've seen people sleep, sleeping on the streets, sure. literally sleeping on the streets, or nothing but a small piece of clothing just to cover themselves up. So it opened my living in India has opened my mind. Uh -huh. Living in India has made me realize that I'm privileged. Yeah, I am very privileged, and I've learned a lot. India is diverse. The food, the culture, the society. Every day you meet different people. Sometimes you meet the racist ones, sometimes you meet nice ones. Yeah. So if you want to grow up, if you want to get out of your comfort zone, I would say India is the place to be. And I always say this, once you survive in India, you can survive anywhere uh -huh. in the world. <laughs> so come to India. <laughs> what about you, Sam? Is it adaptable? It is adaptable and it's easy because if, um, if you are coming to India, of course, you are coming with a plan. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there must something ahead that is calling you to India. You, just, you, you can't just sleep and decide to come to, come to India in the morning. So you yeah. come here with a plan. So whatever that is Lolo is saying about the, the hardship she sees in, yeah. in India, it, 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 it doesn't affect us. It's easy to be independent in India. You see those hardships in the comfort of your own room. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's easy to be independent in India. So just to get out of your comfort zone, no. just come to India. <laughs> I feel like we are independent because we get our allowances. That's what I'm saying. You come to here to India having a plan ahead. You just yeah. can't decide oh, to come can, to India You can't come here to India without a plan. You won't survive. Exactly. You won't get a job. Exactly. First of all, you won't get a job. No one will, no one will employ you. Yes. So, so you won't get a job. Is that an impossible mission? Yeah, no. So. <laughs> come to India with a plan. That's true. Come to India with a plan. With don't, plan. don't just come here. Don't yeah. just throw your... You need to prepare your... You know, you know when people are like, I'm just going to Europe. I'm just going to America. I don't have a plan. I'll see when I get there. They start working at coffee shops, I think, I think trying, crazy. trying to adapt, uh, trying nah. to to create nah. their dreams come true. Don't do that in India. Now, for me, I believe that once you live in Africa and then now you live in India, you can live even in Alaska, man. You're not die. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So another question is like, uh, another question is like, uh, now you have an African experience, you have an Indian experience, and I believe that the same way that you left Africa is not the same way that you are now. So what are the values that you will take from India? What are the good things that you will take from India and back home and share with some people there? Only the education I get here, nothing okay. else. Like <laughs> really nothing else. What can I take from India to South Africa? Mm -hmm. No, like no. Only the education that I'm here for. Mm -hmm. Other than that, not, there's nothing. Nothing. No. If you check on the families, the way that they are built, the way that they respect themselves, the way that the, the father take care of their sons. Because another thing that I realized that Africans, they teach their kids to be a man yeah they took so hard from us like for myself i will talk about my own experience my father uh once i get to the university he said that i have money to pay all your universities but i will pay only one month the rest man you need to figure out you are yo uh, you are young enough you have strength you have two hands and two feet you need to start hustling my nigga yeah he say my nigga 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I started hustling with 16 years old, man. I was independent with 16. One six, man. So, but it's not common to find in the Indian society. Yeah. So, but for them, you will see that fathers get loan for the degree, for the master. You know, the way that they save their own family doesn't communicate nothing to you or is make them weak because they are not. Um, I'm from South Africa as well, mm -hmm. a country where most men are responsible for taking care of their families. So yeah. that's nothing new. It's nothing. what they should do, okay. actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The providers. Yeah. Yes, men should men should provide, men should love, men should um, uh, protect as protect. well. Protect, yes, yeah. should be the head of the family, so they're doing what they had to do. <laughs> do what they had to do. Be careful with this sentence. Yeah, what about you? Wow, I I feel like uh, you you've been in India for a short period a short of time. Short period of time, yeah. I have a lot to take home. I have so a lot to take home. You have a time, sister, home. speak. <laughs> First of all, uh -huh. supporting my own people. Supporting. You know, back home, I used yeah. to like the idea of wearing brands, you know. Yeah. I like wearing Adidas. I'm not saying they're bad, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not saying they're bad before Adidas sue me. <laughs> I'm not saying they're bad, but in India, they support their own. In yeah. my country, there are people who are producing clothes, nice clothes, but I'll be like, ah, it's not a famous brand. Yeah. Why should I wear it? But now yeah. I want to support my own people. Definitely. I want to travel my own country. One thing about Indians, they will travel their own country. Yep. There will, there will be Indians moving from here to just to Goa for yep. a December vacation. For us, December vacation, we want to go to Bali, we want to go to Thailand. That, but how about the tourism in my country? I should be the one who's, uh, uh, supporting the tourism in my own country because mm -hmm. that means that all the money is going back into my country. Yeah. So instead of spending it elsewhere, Definitely. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Yeah. I'm just saying it's something that I feel like we should be doing more. Yeah. <clears throat> you learn from Indians. I've learned from Indians that yeah. Indians they are they are sticking to their own country. Definitely. They're sticking in to their own principles mm -hmm. and also principles. Principles. Indians have a lot of principles. If an Indian is a Christian, that Indian will not attend any Hindu festivals. But for us, we yeah. do everything. Everywhere. Everywhere we are there. <laughs> if there is yeah. a party, I'm there. I don't care if it's Muslim, <laughs> it's Hindu. If, if there is a party, I'm there. So my principles should be aligned with whatever I believe in. Definitely. My morals, I shouldn't forget my morals. Also family. Family. Yeah. You know, when I, when I was home, I couldn't wait to go to India because I want to be independent. I want to live alone. I want to I wanna have that freedom. Uh -huh. Even my, my mom knows that when I finish varsity, I want to move out. Yeah. But growing up with family, I've seen Indians, old men, they prefer to buy apartments closer to their families so that they grow with their families. They have the spirit of Ubuntu. Yeah, Indians Ubuntu. have the spirit Together of Ubuntu. We... But... Yeah. One thing for sure is that only for them. Only for them, yeah. <laughs> only for them. This cannot. <laughs> only, yes. Not for them. Only. Are you ready to live with your mother-in-law? She's your neighbor? Mm, no. no? <laughs> what no. you have it done is, to my son? It's, it's, it's a beer. good thing. It's a good thing that you, you take care of the people. And like you said, Indian mm. parents, they do anything for their babies, for their kids. Definitely. They don't mind taking a loan so that the kid can go to study in the USA. Whereas yeah. for us, if you don't get the government scholarship, Man. you have to see what you do. I'll, pay, I'll only pay for my uh, parents in Africa be like, we'll only pay for like a year. Yeah. And then next year we have to get a part-time job. Definitely. So that we can, you can help. But in India, I've learned that Sometimes I've also learned that doing the simple thing is more f fulfilling. Indians, they live a very simple life. Very simple. They, every Sunday, they do one thing. They enjoy their Sunday, they go to the beach. No money spent. 
For us, this Sunday, I want to go to Upland Bristol. Next Sunday, I want to go to this restaurant. I want to go to this. I want to go to this. And I'm wasting a lot of money. Money I should be investing. So they love a simple life. And I like that thing about India, about Indians mm -hmm. to say they love a simple life. Simple mm, life. I've I've traveled India, I've traveled, I've been to the big cities, Mumbai, Delhi, but I've noticed that even so, even in those countries, they love a simple life. Simple life. So they can feel comfortable with a certain amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. So they are comfortable with My question is, uh, how was, uh, how, how were you, uh, when you first time get into the class and you find out that girls in one side and boys in the one side. <laughs> Tell me, well, how was it for you? I think for me, I came, I came to India well prepared, physically, okay. physically and mentally. Mentally, yeah. Yeah, so I think I did my research. I knew about that. Really? Yes, I knew Man. about that. They told me, so okay. it wasn't a surprise to me. I expected it. The only thing I wanted to know, I wanted to know where are the, where are the boys' side and where yeah. are the girls' side. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know it existed. I didn't know it was a thing. Yeah. So when I got to class, I just sat... Um, mm -hmm. When I got to class, I just sat down. Mm -hmm. And apparently, because when I got... when I, For me, we were one of the new... Um, I think it was the second time engineering college has taken applicants. Yes. So we were still a limited number. So when I got to class, when I get in the class, everyone was like, oh, shocked. Like they were literally shocked. So with that, I just wanted to sit down. Yeah. Like I just wanted to get a, a, fa a seat fast and sit down. Mm -hmm. And I sat on the boy's side. And when I sat on the boy's side, it was even worse. Because now they're like, oh, you're sitting on the wrong side. But they can't tell me because they're scared of talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like everyone was staring. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Why are you staring at me? And then my classmate didn't say anything. The lecturer comes in and yeah. also he's shocked, like, first of all, you're an African. Yeah. Secondly, you're sitting on the wrong side. And he looks at me, he looks at my classmates and he's like, sit there. Okay. What's going on? He tried to explain. Unfortunately, I think his, his English was not that good. So he tried to explain, and I'm more confused now. Like, what's going on? What's happening? <laughs> Why are you moving me from my seat? But I just, I didn't want any drama. I just stood up and sat on the side he wanted me to sit on. And then later, someone explained to me, a friend of mine explained that, no, we're supposed to sit like this and like this. I've never been shocked in my life. Like, <laughs> Yeah, guys. I'm not seeing you uh, enjoying your tea and your milkshake. So just to remind you guys, this podcast is sponsored by Beanboard China Walter. If you are here in Vizak, this is the best place to have your coffee and some quali quality time because you have a nice environment and you can come here even for date, man. <laughs> and those <laughs> for the next episode, uh, we will launch one as special uh tickets or gift if you came here by this podcast you can have a certain amount for discount but we will talk about this for the next podcast so moving on to another question it is like it's very difficult to find uh, a woman or a girl doing uh, a hard job back home because as africans if we see an old woman doing something, all of the young men will run to help her. So it is like the first time that I saw uh, a girl, uh, a woman, I think it was a woman, yeah, it was a woman, an old woman working in a construction of a building, that thing shocked me. It was like, like a punch in the face. And I start uh, not crying, but I became so emotional that I put my mother in that place and then I moved toward her to try to help her and she said no 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 it's okay it's okay and I, and then I was like man how can it be possible and 
I believe that you also face the same problem, right? Uh, or you have seen this kind of things. And how was your reaction? In my country, I think we have adapted. Mm -hmm. We are treating, especially in the workplace, we are treating women and men equally. Okay. So women also yeah. also started to get into uh, into the construction side of work. So I've seen women uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in construction, but they don't do this hard work, hard work. As, as I see yes. here. Maybe they go there as the site manager. Site manager. They can do like a lighter work, supply chain. something like that. Yeah. So here it's, 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 it's kind of different. It's really different. Yeah. I'm, I'm only like, hey, because, yeah. I was also shocked the way they do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was also shocked as well. Yeah, no, as you as a as a as a woman, explain it. <laughs> this is a bit, I don't know. Yeah. When I first saw that woman working on construction, yeah. I'm not saying disclaimer. I'm not saying women can't do hard work. Yeah. But it's sad to see an old woman doing hard work, construction work. Because yeah. first, the moment I saw that woman, I imagined my own mother doing that. And it was sad. I remember I was very sad. Yeah. We were talking about it like, okay, I do understand that women have the same ability to do whatever a man can do, but this is too much. I remember because it was hot and she was, she was the only one carrying these bricks up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs. I felt so sad. Yeah. It was really sad. And in my country, also women do this work. But you know, it's like fit woman. Sometimes you find a woman in construction, you find a woman and But she's like still a young person, still fit yeah. enough to do the work. That woman was old and you can see that she was hardly moving, but she kept on going and going. That's when I knew that the struggle is real in India. But, but I, think, I think they are strong. They are stronger than our mothers. Yeah. A few weeks back, we were just standing with my friend from Mozambique, Pierre. We saw a woman, an, an old woman climbing a fence. I was like, my mother would never do that thing. <laughs> yeah, they are, so they are very strong. strong. They are yeah. very, very strong. Yeah, I think, they are very strong. Yeah. I think they have, they have, they have up, adapted to their way of life. It's, it, it, it's what they grew up seeing around yeah. them, so there's, it's nothing new and, to and, them. And, and, and the sad part is that the Indian men don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah. It, it, it's only said for us, not for them. Not, not for them, because I believe it's also that if the, if they go to our country, they will also be shocked with many situations. Yeah, maybe they will find many situations they are strange. Uh, like vegetables, and uh, women. Yeah, it's hardly ever uh, to find here. And not has a woman, but back home we have a taxi woman, right? So they can also find it strange. I, I have a lot of sisters, and yeah, as part of my family, women are like gold. Yeah, we treat our sisters as princess men. Yeah, although I have many, as you can see, I'm tall, and my sister is also tall and muscles and all those things. Yeah, they like to fight, they beat me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they beat me a lot. But yeah, most of hard worker at home, it was for men. Yeah. But come to the subject, it's very common to see those who went outside to work or study. When they come back home, they bring the girlfriend or wife. But you will see Americans, Russians, Brazilians. But it's very difficult to find a woman, has, an Indian woman in our country who get married with African. So, for you guys, what is the issue behind it? <laughs> mm. Mm. I don't know how to answer this question because I know a lot of people, black guys yeah. in my country, who has Indian wives. No, in South yeah. Africa, we have a big North Indian, Indian community. Indian. Don't from, confuse from that. South Africa, Africa. Yeah. those yeah. Indians are from South Africa. Yeah. Here we're talking about Indians from India. India. He came here to study or to work. And then you go back married, with the wife. And go back with the wife. I will never do that because... <laughs> 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 Firstly, my family sat down with me and like, uh -huh. you, are not, you are not going there to be a father. <laughs> you are not going there to bring us a wife. So that's uh, the reason I think I will never, never. I can do anything I want to do, but carefully. You never know. Man, maybe some spark can happen like in the, in the movie, man. You will see an Indian. 
Yeah. Like, I, I understand. Hence, I'm saying that yeah. I can do anything with an Indian girl, mm-hmm. but carefully. Yeah. I'll make sure that I'm not, go- not going to be the father. I'll make sure that I'm not <laughs> taking her home. But when, as you are saying, yeah. like, we don't know what future holds. Mm-hmm. If it if it gets to to a point where I like, I like you know I, I think I'm taking her home I think I can they yeah. won't chase me away they won't like yeah. hate on her Definitely. yeah what about you Lolo <laughs> talking as a woman have you ever dated an Indian man no I've never oh. I've never dated an Indian man I have some friends I can introduce you oh, oh okay <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk that off camera <laughs> tell me tell me we'll talk about that yeah, off yeah, camera. <laughs> But I feel like it's because Indians, they, whoever they marry, yeah. is chosen by their families. Yeah, yeah. yeah. arranges marriage, yeah. right? It's they, they, they believe in arranged marriage. So I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm just a passerby for an Indian. But going back to the African story, you know that in our tribes and kingdoms, also many couples, they get married by matches, by arranged marriage. I don't know about in South Africa, but I heard the story in my grandma. She told me that in her time, many of the parents, they choose uh, the wife or the husband for their for they daughters or son while they are kids. Yeah. yeah, and they grow up together with this mindset like, my future husband is this one. And if we analyze, most of those couples, Afri- I'm talking about Africa because I have being directly related to that story and if we analyze that we will will realize that uh, most of those who were matched their marriage uh, take more longer than those one that we are choosing right so what is the reason behind it is it the the arranged marriage or the things are changing man (laughs) (laughs) tell me Come on. Um, I think I, what I can say that yeah. was happening in ancient life. Ancient. Yeah. That was happening in ancient life. We are living in 21st century now. Yeah. Obviously, we can't be waiting for our parents to choose our partners for ourselves yeah. or for us, so mm-hmm. to say. So it can't be really happening. And I wanted to say that India is slowly moving. They are yeah. not developing okay. because. Just to get back to what we were discussing, when mm-hmm. you see a, um, an old woman doing a hard work, yeah. those women are, are, are very old. You mm-hmm. never see a young girl doing a hard work as those women. So yeah. what I'm saying, they are slowly moving. When those women get tired, it will be done. They will, they will not get another young girl to do exactly what they are doing. Okay. I think they are slowly moving. moving. After those, after yeah. those women, which is the older generation, mm-hmm. you'll never see a younger generation doing that that kind of work. Yeah, they are slowly moving. That's why they are still believing in arranged, arranged, arranged marriage. Yes, exactly. What about you? Mm, you were talking about arranged, arranged marriage. marriage lasting. Yeah, I think it's because when you when they choose this person for you while you are young yep. you grew up in the same community you grew up with the same morals same ethics mm-hmm. and same principles so yeah. when you're living together now that you are married it's not like you're meeting someone for the first time it's not like someone was raised in a different community and sure. now you have to come together so that's why it, it lasted more mm-hmm. where else when you're choosing someone to date now that Jerry is from Angola. I'm choosing Jerry. Jerry is from Angola. Oh, He's... you're choosing me? Yeah. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So Jerry is from Angola. He was uh, he was raised in a very different community from mine. Mm-hmm. So there will be differences, yeah. and those differences might be the reason why this uh, relationships don't last. But with India, they are not going to to adapt this love marriage thing anytime yeah. soon because when i talk to my classmates now we're in final year and they are telling you that they are waiting for their parents to choose their their partners and those people they will also want to choose for their kids because they feel like it's the right thing to do because when when i ask them why do you let your parents choose whoever you want to marry why don't you tell them that you want to you want to marry someone mm-hmm. different and like no i can't do that those people are from people from their villages 
this thing will not end anytime soon in India because when they believe that, they're also going to do the same thing for their kids and it's going to go on and on and on. Man, uh, let us give uh, props to them because they take those decisions deeply, man. Yeah. Uh, I will talk about my experience with one Indian girl that when I reached here, she was beautiful, man. Like in the movie. Yeah, she was excellent, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, definitely, because I was planning also to have my Jadi or my Sahiti, my Sindhu, you know, my love story in India. Yeah, and it was like, she was very straight to say that, Jerry, I can love you so much deeply, but you need to put one thing in your mind that we will not end together. Yeah, we will not end together. Why? Because of this issue. And I didn't go more deep, man, because, yeah, I don't want to put her life in risk or also my life. And I respect this. I respect the way that they take decision, man. They will die with their decision, man. And this, you know, I'm learning many things on this experience. But going back to the international community, the name motherland for me it makes sense because i could find here that all africans they are really family yeah. there are many similarity between the countries yeah. the language one funny fact that till now burns my mind is like guys from swaziland lesotho botswana and south africa they are different countries they will speak in their own mother language they don't speak the same mother language, but they will understand. Yeah. Just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah between, yeah, yeah. yeah. What she say? You will speak in your own language, you own language, and you guys, man, uh, that thing I call it <laughs> miracle from God, man. Yeah, and I was like, in my mind was like, those guys they speak the same language. And then once you told me that, no, we, not, we don't speak the same language. And I was really surprised, man. How can? And also, I could realize the guys from West Side, they also have the same issue. Some of them, they share the same language. So how is to be in the African community, I can call like this? How is to face this experience, to meet many people from different countries, from Africa? Yeah, here in India. It, it's really a good feeling. It's really a good feeling because we are away from our families, yeah. from our friends, mm. because we left everything, we dropped our life and came to India. So it's a yeah. good thing. It's a good thing to meet these people here where sometimes you find to yourself speaking your own language, own language. to someone yeah. in India. It's really a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Lola? I love meeting Africans. <laughs> <laughs> I love... One thing I love yeah. in, in Vizek, uh -huh. it's meeting Africans. And right now we have so many of them. Yeah. Because yeah. for me, my country already has a lot of people here. Yeah. So it's nice being with my country people. It's amazing. But I love meeting people from other countries of Africa. You yeah. know, I meet someone and they tell me about a, a country in Africa. I remember mm -hmm. when I met Ethiopians and they were telling mm -hmm. me that they've never been colonized. I was fascinated. I wanted yeah. to learn more. Uh -huh. So I love meeting Africans. and. I love the fact that in all the depression that comes with being a fo in a foreign land, meeting another foreigner, not only going through that, but understanding what you're going through, sure. but someone who's not from your country, but someone who gets what you're going through, mm -hmm. and then you just talk about it. You know, it's fun. It's fun to, sometimes some situations they are hard, yeah. but because you meet someone who's going through the same thing, it's end, it ends up being funny, and then we laugh about it. We yeah. tell each other stories, ah, this time this happened to me. It's fun. I, I love being in the African community, and I wish that we could be more united, because more it's fun. Right. More, yeah. We meet more, mm -hmm. it, because for me it's amazing. Yeah. It's where I find my strength, if I may say. You know, seeing someone else and be like, I'm not alone. It's not like it's only the Swazi. Yeah. I meet people from Angola, Mozambique, yeah. everywhere. They speak different languages. It's beautiful. It's like, we are, we are different people, but we're the same person. Same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So now uh, at the end, we are at the end of our first episode. So my last question for you guys is, 
What is the advice that you give for those who want to come? They also, there are so many friends or relatives that are planning to apply for ICCR scholarship or study in India, or they are planning even to come and work here. What is the advice that you will give to these people, to those people? Yeah, I will start with some. Okay, well, what, what can I say or what I can say is that mm-hmm. it's a, um, India is a good country to come and spend those few years and not to come and live permanently in India. Yeah. And people should take that opportunity, the ICSR opportunity, opportunity to come and study in India. So, yes, but to come and work in India, no, that's like, you shouldn't think of shouldn't think of that but you can come and study in india take that opportunity it's a good life in india you get to be independent yeah yeah what about you miss lolo <laughs> come to india you didn't share your story with dating an indian guy you didn't share this story but next podcast just next save podcast. the answer please yeah for me i would say that come to india Uh, India is a very beautiful country. India is a very complex, diverse country. So if you want to experience life in a different view, if you want to experience something you've never experienced before, I would advise you to come to India. And India is diverse. You'll get to see all aspects of life. You'll get to see the luxury life. You'll get to see the beyond be, beyond poverty, way beyond, way it's bad. And that's when you realize that how lucky you are. So India will teach you valuable life lessons. So I would advise anyone to come to India. And also when you're coming to India, you should listen to this very carefully. When you're coming to India, carefully, lower please. your expectations. Yeah. They should go down. Like if they are here, just down. Down. <laughs> down, because you will be very, disappointed and once you're disappointed that's when you you um you start seeing India as a bad as a bad place because those disappointments will lead to depression. You feel like why did I come here? Why did I do this? Why did I live my life at home? So lower your expectations and know that anything is possible. I've seen a cow in an auto. <laughs> anything is possible in India. Yeah. <laughs> anything is possible. So it's a world of possibilities. It's a world where you you see the things you've never imagined could happen in life. Yeah. And it's an eye opener. India is an eye opener. Yeah. And once you are in India, for those who are already in India and they feel like they are feeling like India they can't stand India. India is depressing. India is this and that. I would say that create your own fun. Yeah. India is not fun as a country but you have to create your own fun you know what you love you know what you love doing you know what makes you happy do that i know we came here to learn we should focus on education but to suppress or to release those frustrations do something fun go swimming if you love swimming we have pools the park north hotel a lot of places go swimming travel travel india vizek is a beautiful city i might say Vizek is a beautiful city, but go to Delhi, go to Mumbai, it's, it's different, it's a whole world. It's like, I'm in India, but I'm in different kind of India. The people are different, you meet different people, you meet Indians wearing shorts. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I never knew this existed. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that give India a chance. I know for those who just came last year, who just came previous year, they're like, uh, I don't see any point of being here. Give India a, 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 a chance live life go out enjoy life like it's take this as this is my four years to explore life you know you've been living your life your whole life you've been living you're still going to live but this is the only time you're gonna live in india yeah so explore india go to goa we have beautiful places in india we have beautiful places in vizek i've had some i remember i was having a conversation with someone and he was saying, Vizek is boring, I can't visit any place in, in, in Vizek. And I was like, have you been to Tokla Konda Beach? He's like, no. He's like, that's a quiet beach. Have you been to Pinboard? Have you been to Pinboard? You know, because that person is in hostel, depressed, yeah. and he doesn't know that Pinboard has the best cakes, best velvet cake. They don't know that. So explore India, 
live outside of your comfort zone. Have fun and make the best out of your years here. I know I had fun in India. Yeah. It's, a, it's a memory I'll have for the rest of my life because I did not suppress myself to what I knew. I did not suppress myself to what everyone around me was doing. Because when I first got here, the people I was with, they used to tell us, oh, you can go here and here and here. But I was like, that's not what I love doing. I love traveling. Let yeah. me try going to Hyderabad and see how it is. So I went to Hyderabad, it was amazing. Then I started traveling every now and again. So travel India, if you love traveling, go out. Meet Africans. There is not, there is nothing more fun than meeting other Africans. Get out of your comfort yeah. zone because if I meet, if I'm a Swati and I'm meeting every day, I'm meeting Swazis. Of course, we're gonna complain about this and this and this. Yeah. But you meet someone else from another country who've seen India in a different aspect, who've seen a different part of India that you've never experienced before. That Definitely. person will tell you, "Have you been to Pinford? Have you been to this place?" And you're like, no, I've never been. And the moment you go there, you experience it and you're like, this is nice. I didn't know this existed. And then you start having a different mindset about India. So in summary of all that, lower your expectations, create your own fun and enjoy every minute in India. Yes. Uh, so guys, I would like to say thank you guys. Thank you guys. It's uh, really a pleasure to have you guys in the podcast. I believe that you will be available for the next episode. But for the next one, it will be made a little bit female because we will be talking about Indian culture and international women. So I'm really excited again to hear from you, ladies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The next one, we'll have you here again. Thank you, Brother Sama. Thank you, Lolo. I really appreciate your presence here. I believe that everything that we share here, it will be important for you who is watching this podcast. Yeah, we are not here to judge, but we are here to, to share our thoughts, our points of view about India. You know, everything has a good and bad side. Even if it was an Indian in Angola, in Eswatini, or in South Africa, you would have a complaint, compliment about it or some comment about it. So we are just here to express uh, what we think and what we believe that we believe that it should be. So uh, thank you for watching this podcast. I will request you to follow us on our social media, Instagram and Facebook. Put your like and subscribe in our channel. And also, please come to Beanboard China Walter. You will have a perfect and a good time and a very quality time. Man, I invite you guys to come here and also be prepared because we have the next one. We are coming for big. So this is another podcast. My name is Jerry and thank you guys so much. God love India. God love Africa. God love all the world. Bavunara. Chala Bagundi. The North Podcast.